Hello and welcome back to Sex Brains Money. Thanks for sticking with us on this boiling hot Tuesday morning. Apparently they're supposed to break all kinds of heat records today, but we're trying our best to stay cool in the studio. So here I have one of my coolest professors from my days at U of T, Dr. John Verveke. Thanks for joining us today, John. How Thank are you? Fine. Thank you for having me. Good. I'm glad that you were able to join us today. So let's talk about something called flow. I remember you mentioned it in one of our classes and I thought mm -hmm. it was so interesting. Just tell us, what is flow? All right, well, flow is a phenomenon uh, discovered by the psychologist Chick Sentmahai. He wrote a book entitled Flow, mm -hmm. and it's very uh, important because it's, uh, it's a universal phenomenon, which you don't find often in psychology, but Love across that. all cultures, genders, socioeconomic groups, occupations, people experience flow, and they describe it in pretty much the same language across all these uh, differences. Mm -hmm. So that tells us something pretty fundamental about human nature is involved in flow. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he studied some of the conditions that create flow. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people would know it uh, like when you're in the zone, mm -hmm. you're doing something and you're really engaged. Yeah. And it has, it has a lot of interesting properties. You're, 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 you feel very intensely aroused, but at the same time, you're, you're, you seem like your behavior is effortless. Like mm -hmm. uh, if a goalie's playing hockey and he's in the zone, he just puts out his glove and there's the puck. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And, you know, time seems to pass differently. Uh, people lose that sort of nattering self-consciousness we carry around every day. Like, oh, how do the little I voice in our <laughs> yeah, head yeah, yeah, that's yeah. always chirping right. and making us anxious and uncomfortable. Right, because they're just so focused on the task and so engrossed with it. They feel really deeply connected. Mm -hmm. There's this almost sense of vividness. Everything seems super salient. There's a sense of ongoing discovery. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's simultaneously an optimal experience. People find it enormously positive but it's also optimal performance. Generally, people are performing at their very best. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, you know, I've heard former athletes talk about, you know, being in the zone and baseball players where they're standing in the batter's box and looking at the pitch coming in, they say it looks as big as a beach ball. That's right. So I guess that's sort of yep. the, the feeling. And, you know, sometimes artists talk about it when they're, you know, doing their paintings or musicians. Jazz musicians especially. Absolutely, and jazz is definitely, it's probably the most the pure form of music because of the creative components mm -hmm, that you exactly. just don't see anywhere else. I'm yeah. a huge fan of jazz and uh, listen to it whenever I can. So why is it that you're studying it? What, what, what drove you to decide to investigate this at the academic and was it something personal that you experienced with it? Or? Well, uh, yeah, okay, so there's personal reasons. I mean, I'm a martial artist, mm -hmm. I teach Tai Chi, uh, okay. so uh, the flow state is something I experience very, uh, very constantly. I also get in the flow state often when I'm lecturing. Ah, yes. <laughs> uh, and so it it has a personal meaning to me, but I'm also very much interested in it as a cognitive scientist because mm -hmm. I think it reveals, as I said uh, earlier, something very deep about human cognition and the way it works. Mm -hmm. uh, so my colleague, colleague and I, uh, uh, Arian uh, Hera uh, Bennett, we're, we're proposing a model for what we think is going on in the brain mm. when people are in flow. Okay, so tell us a little bit about that. Uh, well, I guess the best way to try and describe it is uh, to, first of all, connect it to an experience I think everybody's had. Everybody's had an insight experience, mm -hmm. a moment where you've had that aha, yeah. where you realize, oh, the way I was looking at this problem was wrong. I have to reframe the problem totally. Mm -hmm. So you get that aha moment. So think about it. If, you're, if, I got, if I put you in a situation where you have, a, sort of a, you have to have an insight, mm -hmm. and then that puts you into another situation where you have to have an insight, Right? And you get sort of this cascades of insight, and that aha moment gets repeated and repeated and repeated. So mm -hmm. flow is kind of this cascading of insights, this constant aha moment. Mm, okay. That's and you're always just sort of catching up to the problem and realizing how to deal with it, and then another one presents itself. And exactly, because that's what Csikszentmihalyi found. He found that the conditions that cause flow are you know, where the demands of the situation just exceed your skills. So you have to sort of constantly stretch your skills, mm. constantly reframe your thinking as a way of uh, solving the problem. This is why uh, people do bizarre things like rock climbing. Yes, uh, <laughs> I never understood the rationale behind it. Well, uh, it, well there's, there's been study of this, and it looks like the reason why people rock climb is precisely because uh, it puts them in the flow state. Because if mm. you're rock climbing, you, get, you literally impasse. You can't go on. You have to sort of reframe. Mm -hmm. Then you get to a new situation, a new problem. You have to do it again and again. So you're, you're cascading all these insights. Oh, so you're experiencing challenges and then overcoming them. And then that leads right. to new challenges, which you then overcome. And it just continues and continues. And right. So what's happening in the brain when all this is going on? Well, we think what's happening um, is that um, a, a very important form of implicit learning is occurring. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so most people are obviously aware of explicit learning, you know, when you're trying to learn and somebody's teaching you something. But what they don't know is a lot of our learning is implicit learning. Mm -hmm. We're picking up on very complex patterns in the environment without being aware of that. Okay. And, and this has been shown experimentally. Mm -hmm. Now what's really interesting is there's a guy by the name of Hogarth. He has the theory that our intuition, you know, those gut feelings you have about things, mm -hmm. these are actually the result of implicit learning. That's mm -hmm. why we okay. don't know like where they come from, but that's uh, uh, the result of that. Now the idea is that um, there's a problem with implicit learning. Because it's implicit, uh, it, it, we often don't have a good management of it. Mm. Now what do I mean by that? There's all kinds of patterns in the environment and implicit learning will pick up on any complex pattern. Mm -hmm. Now some of those patterns are real, they're causal, but mm -hmm. some of them are just weird correlations. Mm -hmm. And what you want to do is you want to structure the way you're implicitly learning so that you don't pick up on the illusory correlations and you zero in on the causation. Mm -hmm. And so what Hogarth proposed is that you have to get really tight feedback and the error signal has to be really costly to you, really challenging to you. Mm -hmm. Now what uh, Arian and I propose is the characteristics that Hogarth said would be really good for improving our intuition mm -hmm. are exactly the characteristics that Csikszentmihalyi say cause flow. Oh, so there's the connection right, right there. Right, so the idea is what you're doing, what flow is, it's an evolutionary marker mm -hmm. to saying you're doing really good implicit learning. You're mm -hmm. acquiring really good intuitions. Yep. Now, like everything evolutionary, it can be hijacked, like, you know, gambling hijacks our risk. Of course. Thing, right? And, you know, we can, flow can be hijacked by video game and other things. But we, we think that the original evolutionary purpose was basically telling the brain mm -hmm. You're, you're picking up good intuitions, mm -hmm. and you're, 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 you're practicing really good insight. Mm -hmm. Both of those would really be powerful for improving our survival. And they're generally good for us all the time. Of course. <laughs> uh, so that's why we, let, we find it so, so good. Mm -hmm. And that's why you, know, you feel like you're in the zone. That's your brain telling you that you're doing, doing the good things that you're supposed to be doing. And yep. you're picking up on real patterns instead of fake ones. That's so right. yeah, that sounds. I, I personally experience it when I'm driving and when I'm riding my mountain bike. And uh, when I'm you know, going down a big hill or something like that, and I have to figure out exactly how fast I want to be going when I hit the curve. If, I'm going, if it's something where I'm you know, going on a easy trail, I get bored very quickly. Yes, if it's something yeah. too steep, I get terrified. So right. I guess flow is that middle marker right in between too challenging and too easy. That's right. If it's too challenging, we get anxiety. If it's too easy, we get boredom. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, that channel, it's not, a, it's not the same thing as pleasure. Uh, flow is different than pleasure. Mm -hmm. In fact, flow seems to contribute much more to people's evaluations about their overall quality of their life. Mm -hmm. So the more often people flow, yep. the more they sort of report that they like their life when the mm. quality of their life is good. Well, that's great. So real quick, just to close out, why is it important and why is flow relevant to everybody? Well, uh, I think flow is relevant, first of all, because it, you know, it's a way of improving your insight, mm -hmm. uh, which is really important for solving problems. It's really good for improving your intuition, and m many of your judgments are based on your intuition, so mm -hmm. you want to improve that. And then thirdly, as I mentioned, it, it, it really tends to improve the quality of your life, probably because it improves those other two things. Of course. So, you know what? Thanks very much for sharing that with us. I hope that our guests and viewers are going to be um, you know, able to continue this conversation with you later. John, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been a great conversation, and uh, I think that it was really fascinating. And I, think, I hope that other people out there are able to recognize when they engage in their own flow states and when they experience that sort of phenomena for themselves. And, you know, whatever it is you're doing, Doing when you experience flow, hopefully you'll just keep doing it. So we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back with Carlisle Jansen from Good For Her. Stay tuned.